one. Good evening and welcome to the fourth webinar of the series focusing on the Daughters of Penelope mandatory and voluntary projects. We are so pleased that you have joined us. Today, our presentation is about the Daughters of Penelope Foundation Incorporated. This is more than a project. The foundation is an arm of the Daughters of Penelope. You will hear that the foundation does more than administer our scholarship program. I had the honor and privilege to serve on the foundation as past president and secretary close to 20 years ago. But enough about me. I invite Grand Governor Kathy Matrakis to introduce our speakers. Thank you, Grand President Celia. Hello, sisters and a HEPA family. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that any questions can be included in the Q&A and chat session, and please make sure to send the questions to all the panelists and attendees so we can answer them. Also, as, as Grand President mentioned, uh, and Executive Director Ellen, it's on Facebook Live, and it uh, is recorded so it can be seen on the DOP website under the Members tab in the webinar section. So now I'm honored and delighted to introduce our speakers for the DOP Foundation, Inc. this evening. For most of us, these devoted sisters are most familiar to us and have served and dedicated many years of service to our international women's organization. Anna Helene Grossmanidis. Sister Anna Helene is a 30 year member of Daughters of Penelope and a past member of the Maids of Athena. She hailed from Empire State District 6 and currently hails from Yankee District 7. She's a past grand president and has been a member of the Daughters of Penelope Foundation for the past four years and is current president of the foundation. Sister Sonia Stefanidis. Sister Sonia is a 60 year member of the Daughters of Penelope and hails from Citrus District 2. She's a past grand president and current member of the foundation and she's president emeritus of the Daughters of Penelope Foundation. Antoinette Marusis Zachariadis. Sister Antoinette is a 23, me 23 year member of the Daughters of Penelope and hails from the Garden State District 5. She's a past district governor and a current district governor a past chairman of the 5th District of HEPA Cancer Research Foundation and the past president of the Daughters of Penelope Foundation, Inc., and has been scholarship chairman for the past five years. Welcome, sisters and HEPA family members, and thank you for joining. Sister Annaline, if you... Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, at first, the first thing I'd like to say is um, I thank you for the opportunity to tell you a little about what you may or may not know about the Doors of Penelope Foundation. And I'm very honored to have Sister Sonia, who's our president emeritus. And this is her brainchild. This is something that she um, came up with, an outgoing grand president when she was grand president. And this is, she's going to talk about our humble so I, I'm, I'm very grateful to have her join us tonight. Um, Sister Antoinette, um, we are, are indebted to you for the dedication to the, not only to the foundation as past president, but as a scholarship chairman. It is a very big undertaking. As an educator, I know that it is. And I, I gratefully thank you on behalf of the foundation for the great work you do. And your dedication is, is something that we greatly appreciate because you love not only what you do, but you love the students. And I think that and the recipients really um, gravitate to you because of that. So I thank you for joining us today. I do want to thank the um, members in, uh, who are uh, participants who are watching and the members of the board, the current board that I know are watching. I've asked them to join us tonight um, and uh, just want to mention them so that they uh, acknowledged. Uh, Sister Eva Jean Farmalot, our vice president, she hails from District 17. And I want to I'm emphasizing that because I want you to know that we are a wide range of sisters from various districts. Sister Demi Thomas, both past grand presidents, uh, District 5 secretary. Sister Joanne Boris, past grand president treasurer from District 21. Uh, Director at large, Roberta Jackson from District 22, who is also a registered parliamentarian, a great person to have on the board. Uh, Sister Sonia Stephanidis, as I said, past grand president and founding president of our foundation. Cynthia Hollister from District 11, a board of director. Angela McGramis from District 12. Connie Palalis, past grand president from District 2. 
Dr. Xanthi Vapopoulos from District 23 and current District Governor of District 23, Urania Stefanidis from District 2, and uh, Evelyn Cialis, past grand president from District 5. So I thank those sisters for joining us tonight. Um, earlier in the year in October, I had an opportunity to share a PowerPoint with you just with some information about it. I will share that with you briefly tonight, but I wanna highlight some of the most important things the Daughters have, uh, Foundation has done. All of you that know uh, about the Daughters of Penelope Foundation, you've known a lot of great things about scholarship. And I think that's important for us to know. We have given um, over $300,000 and more um, in um, foundation money, um, uh, scholarship money that's been accrued all these years. And I think that's amazing. Uh, and if you go back to the, our humble beginnings, we started with the small amount of about $5,000 and now we're up to over $30,000 uh, a year. So that is an amazing um, uh, amount of money. And hopefully that money will grow and grow and grow and we can soon give a lot more money um, to our students. Not only do we give to our students uh, graduate, we also give to undergraduate students and to St. Basil. So uh, Sister Antoinette will dwell on that a little bit more, uh, various kinds of scholarships that we give. We want you to know that we would appreciate all your support, not only as chapters and as districts, but personally, if you feel that the foundation is something that you want to contribute to, please do so, because we believe that those uh, scholarships are something that will, in perpetuity, will help educate our, our students and our, our young people that we today have to help because we know how expensive it is to go to college and to go to universities. And um, I think the more and more we look at that and emphasize how important that is and thank the chapters and the districts who have contributed and persons who have contributed daughters and happens and brothers and sisters to make these scholarships special is really important. The most important thing we have to remember is that we not only do that, we do so many other things. We have given and honored uh, in symposiums and various occasions, people of all different diverse backgrounds, from educators to doctors, to producers, to book writers, uh, to um, people who work for special organizations. We have honored people in our symposiums that are people of character, people who we can uh, look to emulate people who we, uh, you know, might want to get a cultural back. We had an opera singer. We had a, uh, you know, a person who was uh, a stunt person. So not only people of the academia, but people of all different walks of life who can share with us those things. So I think that was important that the Daughters of Penelope Foundation found this idea of symposium that they were able to share all those things. Uh, we hope and God, I pray that we go to Greece in July and we hope to honor someone in, in Greece. And I have been working with Sister Maria Sofianou, who is our liaison in Greece, to try and find the right person. Um, and I, and I, we have worked together to try and look for someone who we really think will be someone who will engage everyone and will enjoy um, learning about someone uh, from our, uh, District 25 that really can give us uh, a symposium like so many others that we've had. Not only has the foundation done that, but they've also done a wonderful thing at the de Young Museum. Uh, they have donated this beautiful statue. And if you have not seen Penelope, uh, I will tell you that my first time seeing Penelope walking into the de Young Museum as grand president, I cried because she stood in the middle of this beautiful hall by herself. She was amazing and she stands so large and overwhelming. So you can't even explain it until you see it, brothers and sisters, you will never understand what an impact the Daughters of Penelope Foundation has given to that museum honoring our woman or our person of history, Penelope, who has really given us a tribute to that. And as a tidbit, I do teach social studies and science to sixth, seventh and eighth graders. And I, I do teach ancient Greece to my students. And the first thing I do is bring up a picture of Penelope because they read Black Ships Before Troy with our literature and social studies teacher. And they learn about Helen of Troy and Penelope and Odysseus. 
And I bring up that picture and I tell them, I'm so proud to be part of this organization that has done something so um, monumental for history. And San Francisco's De Young Museum holds a beautiful place in the arts of the world. So I think that's important to, to mention that. I do also want to mention, which I think is very important, we've held various fundraisers and we've had books of uh, different kinds of books. We have a literacy scholarship that we've donated to. We have donated um, various books that we are proud of. One particular book that I will always hold dear to me is Marianti's Story, a children's book that was written about an immigrant child. And when I was district governor in New York, I brought that book home and placed it on the kitchen table at home in New York. And my mother read it during the day. And I came home from school and she sat at the kitchen table next to me and cried for 45 minutes because she said, that was me. I was 11 years old with little plexi this in my hair. And I sat holding this book and it was me. And, and it was just so great to see that the foundation had picked a unique book and many other books after this that have left an impression on people. So these are the things that we do as a foundation that I don't think anybody else does. Uh, we have given opportunities for people to be able to come and, and contribute to society by making movies, by writing books or whatever it is, but sharing that with all of us when we have them at a symposium. Also, we have also been a very important role and played a very important role in the district governor's conference. And I'll bring some points up that are important for us to mention. Uh, we uh, at the, <laughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, we also were able to start the first district governor's conference under the grand president, uh, sister, um, various grand presidents that wanted to do these different things. But this is important for us to note that we were part of that initiation of that district governor's conference and we paid for the first one that took place. And I think those are important aspects. These are on a timeline that I will share on my PowerPoint. So you can share them with your chapters as well. We also now um, have continued to contribute for many, many years to the guest speaker at the district governor's conference. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to do that in the past year, but we hope to continue to do those kind of things. We have been giving also scholarships for over 36 years with wonderful contributions from everyone. So we greatly appreciate that. We've been hosting a seminar speaker for 29 years. That's a long time for us to be doing all those things. So I am gonna bring up a little bit of my PowerPoint just to show you the highlights. And then I'm going to ask for our other panel sister, Sonia, to tell you a little bit about the humble beginnings of this amazing, right arm as Sister Celia, past president of the foundation, so beautifully put it. So give me a minute to share with you. Oh, sorry. I apologize for that. All right. I will hopefully be able to share my screen. All right. Uh, hopefully you can all see that, yes? Okay. okay. Perfect, all right. So uh, many of you have already seen this screen, but I will share it with you from the beginning. So this is beautiful Penelope, which as I said, she just stands in awe and it's just an amazing sight. And to be honest with you, I, I didn't know this, but I learned as I was grand president that she came from New England, which now, as you know, I live in. Um, and I'm very happy to know my husband who was a past Supreme president did get a chance to meet the woman that donated um, Penelope originally. So I think that was great that he was able to share that story with me as well. So I will get to that to show you a little bit more. So we wanna thank you for your support for over 40 years at the foundation. I'll get to the beginning here. Hold on a minute, I'm sorry. All right, there we go. I'm trying to go back here, all right. All right, a minute, let me get back to the first slide. I apologize for that. All right, so um, just gonna do some highlights here so you can see. So as you know, I, you will have Sister Sonia talking to you a little bit about um, the humble beginnings of the foundation. That's something you can share. As you can see, these are the original board of directors. Many of them are past grand presidents of the daughters, which is a, a wonderful thing to see. Our current board of directors and our past presidents who we are indebted to for all their wonderful dedication and work. 
We unfortunately lost one of our past presidents this year, Sister um, Kiki Hart. So may Ionia Mimitis. A little bit of our beginnings again. Our scholarship, which Sister Antoinette will definitely uh, give you some great information on. Our pay it forward, which I'm sure she'll touch on as well. Our scholarship application and brochure, which she will share with you as well. Our Bridges grant, which this year is continuing. Um, and thank God to many wonderful sisters. This, this has been going on for many years and we're very grateful for that. Uh, we had the windows of opportunity previous to that, which is a different program. And now we have this one and uh, Sister Roberta Jackson and Sister Eva Jean are co-chairman of this. So please take advantage of this chapters if you are uh, interested. Our little brochure that we will share with you. Our founder, which we have some poetry books that we have dedicated. So we hope that you can share with us. Our oral history tapes are very important also aspect. Of the, of the Daughters Foundation, which I had the pleasure as grand president going to University of Minnesota's archives and going into the archives downstairs and being able to see some of them. It was a great opportunity for anyone who gets a chance to do that. Our I Give program. Our timeline, which you can share with everyone. Um, we've uh, up, updated that and thanks to Sister Antoinette for making that happen. So we really appreciate all her dedicated work for doing that. So you can see, it will tell you all the great highlights of things that we've done, how many scholarships we've given, how much money we've given. Uh, it's a great opportunity for you to learn a little bit more about our beginnings and what we've done all these wonderful years. There we go. And again, I end with that. So I'd like to ask now for um, Sister Sonia, if you would share with us where we came from. Thank you, Sister Anna Helene. Thank you, sisters, for the invitation to join you this evening in promoting our Daughters of Penelope Foundation. Uh, it doesn't seem possible that 2021 is the 40th anniversary of my election to the Office of Grand President of our Daughters of Penelope. During my tenure of office, I was able to travel and a great deal and see a lot of our sisters at work, witnessing many of the projects supported not only by the local chapters, the districts in our national convention. I had a vision that the daughters could grow and surpass our previous goals, but we needed to establish a tax-free identity to encourage donations to our organization. How could we get started? As stated in my recommendations as outgoing president in 1982, and I quote, the incoming Grand Lodge appoint a committee to investigate a Daughters of Penelope Foundation being established that would enable the Daughters of Penelope to perpetuate their programs and perhaps enable us to qualify for more funds, end quote. With that single sentence, steps to form the Daughters of Penelope Foundation were launched. We hired an attorney. We developed articles of incorporation we established bylaws, and we designed a logo. We reported back to the next Supreme Convention and were approved by the delegates and filed documents with the Internal Revenue Service, and they were approved. Since its inception, the officers and directors have all served as non-paid volunteers traveling on their own dime or at their expense. The foundation was given the responsibility, as you heard Sister Anna Helene say, of handling the scholarships for the daughters. With the donation of some $20,000, which has grown significantly over the years through our investments and more donations. We have received support not only from the members of the daughters, but the support of the entire AHEPA family. 
we have also benefited by being named beneficiaries in the states and received donations from non-members in memory of loved ones. In concluding this portion of my introduction, I say that I am personally gratified and thankful to the many sisters that have served our founding foundation as officers and directors through the years. This is definitely not a one person job. Without their support, along with the support of our members, we would not be in the place we are today. Working together, there is nothing that we can't accomplish. Who knows in the next 40 years, we can say that we have established our own Daughters of Penelope Library in our own Daughters of Penelope building. We will be able to grant full scholarships versus the one or two years that we are able to grant today. With God's help, all is possible. Amen. Thank you again, and thank you for your support through all these years. And that concludes my portion of it. Thank you, Sister Sonia. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Sister Antoinette. Good evening, sisters and brother Chris. I'm here to enlighten you on the history, process, and procedure of the Daughters of Penelope Scholarships. Over the past few years, the foundation has taken steps to improve and enhance the scholarship application process. Just double checking, can everyone see the screen? Because yes, sometimes I mess up. <laughs> Thank you. Educational scholarship giving is one of the oldest projects of the Daughters of Penelope. At the 1949 Miami Convention, it was approved that the Daughters of Penelope would fund a national scholarship in the amount of $500 to be awarded to a female student each year. It was at the 1951 Minneapolis Convention that the first scholarship of $500 was awarded to Zoe Gannis from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Can you imagine how many young ladies we as daughters of Penelope have helped by contributing to their education? In 1984, when the foundation took over fundraising for scholarships, the daughters of Penelope had four scholarships available on a yearly basis and they were renewable for three years. The average amount awarded on a yearly basis at that time was about $4,800. By the mid nineties through fundraising, generous donations from Daughters of Penelope chapters, individuals and sound investments, the foundation was able to increase the value of the original scholarship awards while obtaining new funding for additional scholarships. This year, the foundation will have available 19 perpetual scholarships and nine annual scholarships in the amount of $31,500. But out of the 19 perpetual scholarships, two are solely dedicated to the students at St. Basil Academy. What is a tax-free scholarship? For a scholarship to be tax-free, it must be used for tuition, books, and other fees related to classes only. Further, the money must go directly to the institutions. If the money is given directly to the student, it becomes a taxable scholarship and the recipient will have to pay taxes on the scholarship. The old school of thought was by giving the applicant the money directly, it would not interfere with financial aid assistance. However, with regard to the IRS tax-free scholarship rules, one must think of it this way. All students do not qualify for financial aid assistance. As well, financial aid assistance does not cover all school expenses. 
Uh, most students will have to take out student loans through government programs and private loans that will have to be paid back over time. So the scholarship money will help reduce the school uh, student loan amount. The duties of the scholarship chairman is to assist the applicant in the scholarship process and answer questions. When in doubt, please contact her by phone or email. All questions are welcomed. As well, she receives the applications and certifies that all requirements are met. After the scholarship applications have been evaluated by an independent evaluation committee, the chairman will then notify all applicants of the results by postal mail. No results will be given out over the phone. She will continue to work with the recipients until all required information is obtained before mailing the checks to the institutions. She must also abide by the rules and regulations set forth by the foundation and render a report. The evaluation committee consists of three evaluators who are current and or retired educators who are not Greek, not affiliated with the AHEPA family and not affiliated with the applicants or the family members. The evaluation committee uses a rubrics for evaluating the scholarship that has been approved and provided by the foundation. It is their duty to rank the scholarships and assign the scholarship awards to recipients. It's not the duty of the scholarship chairman. The results of the evaluation committee will not be available before June 30th. The application is available by the end of January on the foundation and the Daughters of Penelope websites and emailed from Daughters of Penelope headquarters in the annual e-package. A brochure entitled, Understanding the Daughters of Penelope Scholarship Process is also attached to the application to assist with the process. The online application is fillable, which will be more legible than a handwritten application. Please encourage applicants to review the application process early to ensure that they will be able to fulfill all requirements in a timely manner and not wait until the 11th hour. Applicants who wait until the last minute have a greater chance of missing items from the checklist, which will result in disqualification. As well, if they have any questions about the application process, it's better to inquire early with the scholarship chairman. The application is also four pages. All four pages must be returned to the scholarship chairman or will be disqualified. All mandatory items and mailing procedures are included in the checklist. These are all required, missing items and or not following instructions will result in disqualification. Oh, I'm sorry, did I, did I? no, that's right, Never mind. Uh, submission deadline is postmarked by May 15th. Okay, so this is the first page of the application and you can see it has uh, the checklist. The whole entire page is a checklist, which is why it's very important that everyone submit the first page so that we know that you did all this and that you know that you have to do all of that. So the checklist consists of three parts. We have part one, it's for all applicants. It lists the eligibility requirements. And if the applicant does not qualify, they are not eligible to continue with the application. Uh, part 2A is for undergraduates and part 2B is for graduates. Their requirements differ, so you have to follow the instructions there. And then part three is for all applicants. It has um, a statement that the uh, applicant needs to read, it's important, and it shows you the postal um, mailing options. So the mailing process, there are three different mailing procedures. This past year, the mailing process has been updated for US and Canadian applicants. And we will now allow included mailings by UPS, FedEx, and DHL with tracking. There is no need to pay for overnight mailing. 
It must be mailed and postmarked by May 15th, not received uh, by the scholarship chairman by May 15th. So I encourage everyone to save their money. They're overspending on that. Uh, please do not just put stamps on the envelope. It will result in disqualification. So it's one of the mailing options that I just said, or US Postal uh, Service um, certified return receipt signature request. Um, applications cannot be emailed to the scholarship chairman. Only letters of recommendation may be emailed from the person writing the recommendation letter. Okay, this is um, very important on this page. And this, this is the uh, last page. In this section, the chapter is certifying that the active member applying for scholarship or immediate family member or legal guardian has been an active member in good standing with their chapter for a minimum of 24 continuous months prior to the scholarship deadline. It also means that your current years per capita must be paid. Immediate family means father, mother, or grandparent not your aunt, your uncle, or your godparent. The affiliated chapter president and secretary of the sponsor, be it Daughters of Penelope, Order of Ahepa, or Maids of Athena, must sign off on this application or it will be disqualified. For example, if the sponsor is from the local Ahepa chapter, the Ahepa chapter president and secretary must sign the application. If the member or sponsor is from a local Daughters of Penelope or Maids of Athena chapter, the chapter president and secretary must sign the application. If the applicant is a current chapter president or secretary, the vice president and or treasurer may sign in place of the president and or secretary. Some important tips. Applicants should not use their high school issue e email. It will expire upon graduation. And that is one of the most important ways that I get in contact with the um, recipients when after they have been notified that they are an awardee of a scholarship. Essays should be written in paragraph form about the applicant's educational and vocational goals. And as well, it should be well-written. Try not to retell what's on, your, on the application. The evaluation committee wants to know who you are. Letters of recommendation. Applicants should choose someone who will write a recommendation letter that can really illuminate who they are. So the two, besides grades, the two most important things with this application is your essay and your letters of recommendation. The, uh, the evaluators want to get a sense of, indiv of the individual, their accomplishments and their goals for the future. If you are unsure of something or you have a question, please contact the scholarship chairman. She is only a phone call or an email away and she's always willing and available to assist. In Thank 24... Yeah. In 2014, funding for the Daughters of Penelope Foundation Pay It Forward Scholarship began. It was designed to be a vehicle for past scholarship recipients to show their gratitude and pay it forward to the next generation of Daughters of Penelope scholarship recipients. In order to be fully funded, the foundation will have to raise $30,000 from previous Daughters of Penelope scholarship recipients. Because of COVID, the foundation has taken a break from actively pursuing past scholarship recipients. However, since 2016, all scholarship recipients receive information for the Pay It Forward Scholarship, along with a biography of their scholarship donor, an application to join the Daughters of Penelope and or Maids of Athena, and the Daughters of Penelope Foundation brochure. The foundation is always looking for individuals, chapters, and districts to underwrite a scholarship in honor or in memory of a name of their choice. There are two types of scholarships, an annual award and a perpetual award. 
Annual scholarships are established on a yearly basis and can be renewed. The minimum gift amount is $1,000. Perpetual scholarships are established by a donation which guarantees that a contribution will live on in per perpetuity because the sum is protected and only the interest is used to fund scholarships yearly. A minimum of $30,000 establishes a perpetual scholarship and it may be paid in one lump sum or paid over time. However, it must be fully funded before it can be distributed. If you are interested in funding a scholarship, please contact the foundation president for further uh, information. From 1983 to 2020, the Daughters of Penelope ha has awarded approximately 600 scholarships in the amount of somewhere around $520,000. Again, please remember that the scholarship chairman is there to assist. I thank you. Thank you, Sister Antoinette. God bless you. Thank you so much. You did a fabulous job. Thank you. Very good. Excellent, uh, excellent presentations, uh, sisters. Thank you all very much uh, for all the enlightening um, information and all, and all the good work that you all do, the hard work. Uh, we, we had a comment that uh, somebody mentioned, thank you for your, such your, your dedication and everything. And uh, if, you, if anybody has any questions, feel free to uh, put it in the uh, Q&A. I know that one of the flyers that you all had, uh, which was very informative um, that we've given out before, kind of gives the information, uh, you know, on yes. all the different things that you all presented, uh, which is which is really wonderful. Um, I see some things that I wasn't too familiar with about uh, some of the uh, 1929 to 1989 videotape. Uh, I don't know if some of that stuff is being. Maybe... It'll be in the timeline, Sister Kathy, uh -huh. in the in the PowerPoint. I'll send it to Elena. It's okay. in the timeline, um, uh, you know, the, the different movies that we watched started with one and then another one came out, The Dawn and The Legacy. So these are two very important uh, movies that were produced, yep. That's great. And someone that was asking about if you could explain the, the Bridges Incentive Grant Program a little bit more. I, I know it supports members initiatives which build bridges in our communities for their um, donations, but... Uh, Sure. That's also that's also in the um, in the PowerPoint, but um, it's basically the um, what has to happen is a chapter has to have a project mm -hmm. that they um, are want to donate to, and um, they have to have to fill out an application uh, for us. There's a, a very specific procedure that they have to fill out. There has to be it's either a civic or a cultural or an educational charitable. Uh, project that they want to pick. They have to tell us a summary of what the project includes and explain to us how it's going to benefit their area, their community, uh, and um, also tell us uh, what kind of fundraiser or, you know, things they're going to do. And, and then um, it, they can uh, press, put that application through, and then we decide. Uh, so basically, the idea is that we bridge the grant with the foundation with, with the chapters and the bridge connection between the two organizations, the chapter itself doing the fundraising and the uh, the organization uh, of the foundation connecting as a bridge to connect those two things. So um, the, the application process was sent out, the application was sent out by Elena through the package to the presidents. Um, and uh, our website is currently being updated. So that will also be available on our website as well. And the, uh, the, actual, the actual grant goes directly to the charity, not the chapter. To correct? the charity, yeah. correct. Yes, yes, to the charity, yes. There's another question regarding scholarships um, <clears throat> that some schools um, this year are, um, due to COVID, are not requiring students to take the ACT. Are there ACT, SAT requirements on the scholarship application? Um, that is not a requirement of the scholarship application. I do believe it was about five or seven years ago that we took that off the application. So it would just be for high school students, your official high school transcripts. Okay, thank you. Another yep. question uh, regarding scholarships was, would be if a scholarship is awarded to a Canadian, would they be taxed? Um, 
I do not think so because the money still would be sent to the Canadian university, or if they're here in the United States, it's still going to through the university. As long as the money goes directly to the school, they should not be taxed. It's if we gave the recipient the money. The money. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a lot of positive comments. Great resource for the chapters, very informative. Uh, also like to know um, about any applicants that have been Canadians and awarded to Canadians. Have Canadians received, since we're now an international organization, uh, have, have any Canadians received any scholarships or? Um, I would have to look at the list, but I am inclined to say that there, there is possibly, and only sent, I only know the recipients um, from partial, partial from the mid eight, early 80s, and then fully up until now. So in that time frame, I'm going to say there may have been one or two, but I can I can verify that. Okay, very good. Another person uh, said great presentation. Um, let's see, I don't think... Uh, I don't see any more questions. Um, Let's see, um, uh, another one, uh, when I've looked at the foundation website and listened to these informative presentations, I always learn something new. So thank you for all your efforts. If I may just stress one more thing, if you noticed in my presentation, I mentioned at least five times that the scholarship chair person is always here to answer questions. <laughs> And that is the God's honest truth. That is why I said it so many times. I cannot tell you how many phone calls and emails I received during the year. And, and it's always been my pleasure to assist in any way I can, because that is my job. It's my duty to make sure that the applicant gets that application in, filled out correctly. So questions are always welcomed. I just want to stress that. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Um, and another, uh, another uh, person said that they love the pay it forward. And uh, they said they might uh, try to use that with their with their chapter and everything. Awesome. So, uh, and uh, another point was, um, since, um, you know, we're somewhat limited with fundraising due to the COVID. Uh, do you have any um, suggestions for fundraising? Well, we, we talked a little bit about with the foundation board about different ways of doing fundraising virtually. Mm -hmm. So uh, we suggest doing something like that. There are some great um, different resources. Uh, if I'd be more than happy to share some of those websites and different organizations that do uh, help to do fundraising that way. So uh, um, I would be happy to do that. Please, just like Sister Antoinette said, Myself as the foundation president, and I'm sure many members, members of our board will be happy to answer questions. I am available by email. I please, by all means, uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions or just if you wanna talk a little bit more about the foundation and, and things that we can do together. Uh, we are part of the Doors of Nelf. We, we are hand in hand with one another and we wanna be able to reach out our hand to help. So please make sure you ask because we'd be happy to answer. Yes, and I think we also had another one of the webinars was on the virtual fundraising. So that's uh, on the website, the Daughters of Penelope website uh, under the members uh, tab for uh, webinars. Um, another sister mentioned that the scholarships are quite low in comparison with the rising cost of college education, uh, just a statement, um, but certainly with the donations and more and more people being able to provide for that uh, as, as they've grown with the number of, of scholarships you've been able to give over the years since inception. So that's uh, that would be a, a good thing, so. Okay, I, I don't, let me see if there's one more here. I think that was it, yeah. There's one oh. in the Q&A. Yeah, I think that's uh, it. I don't see any more, Georgette, do you? Uh, no. Uh, Sister Celia, it's all yours then. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, past Grand President Sonia, past Grand President Anna Helene, and District Governor Antoinette for taking the time to enlighten our membership on the foundation. I also wish to thank the other members of the foundation for joining us this evening. We are gr very grateful for all that you do to further the Daughters of Penelope 
and we were also very grateful for the foundation support of the district governor's leadership seminar, which now provides the funds for our speaker. I am confident that you were able to gain a better understanding of our foundation. We had very few questions, so you must have had all the information in your presentations that members asked. I want to thank the organizers, Grand Secretary Georgette Bulajaris, Grand Governor Zone 1, Kathy Matrakis, and Executive Director, Elena Saviolakis, for coordinating and hosting our webinar. Thank you, sisters, for attending today's presentation and for your thoughtful questions. I invite you all to tune in next week. Grand Governor Kathy, what will be the topic of our webinar next week? Uh, next week, we will be talking about um, the, uh, let me see, the- Penelope's uh, place. Penelope's place, Penelope's place. place. How awesome. will be on um, Thursday, uh, excuse me, Friday, uh, February 11th at uh, 12 noon. Uh, Penelope's place located in Brockton, Massachusetts. So we hope you can join us uh, for then. Information will be forthcoming. Thank you all, sisters. And Thank Brooke. you so much. Thank you so much, evening, everyone. Good weekend. Have a good, good night. Have a great weekend. Bye. 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 Bye.